Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. You're listening to The Wannabe Minimalist Show with Deanna Yates, episode number 53. Today, we're looking at this idea of feeling trapped in life and what to do about it. Yes, it was inspired by the interview with Megan and Harry, but if you've ever felt trapped or like you were just going through the motions, you're going to want to listen to this episode. Hey there, my wannabe minimalist friend. Welcome back to the show. As always, I'm your host, Deanna Yates, creator of littlegreenbow.com and The Wannabe Minimalist Podcast. At the time of this recording, the doors for my newest course, Vibrant Home Academy, are just days away from opening. It's going to be amazing. Honestly, I just put the finishing touches on a webinar that I plan to give next week, and I know I'm biased, but it is one of the best things I've ever put together. I'm so excited to share the details with you soon. But this week, I'm going to talk about current events. I don't usually do this, but earlier in the week, I watched the interview with Meghan and Harry. Over 28 million people in the UK and the US watched it on Sunday night, so there's a good chance you caught it too, or at least have seen follow-up comments on the news, morning shows, or social media in the days since. And before I get too far ahead of myself, I do want to remind you that you can find all the show notes for today and links to anything that I mention at littlegreenbow.com slash 53. Again, that's littlegreenbow.com forward slash the number 53. Okay, now back to the interview and why it inspired today's episode. I want to preface this by saying that I usually couldn't care less about what's going on in a celebrity's life, and I never even pay attention to what's going on with the British royals. So it's purely from a place of curiosity that I even watched the Oprah special this week. I knew it was going to be a big event, and I wanted to be in the loop. But as I watched the interview, the one word they kept using was trapped. Megan said she felt trapped because she couldn't do anything on her own. She didn't have access to her passport, driver's license, or car keys. What? I mean, I can't imagine that. And the British press, they wouldn't leave her alone, no matter how out of sight she remained. She was lonely, and she had horrific things being said about her in the tabloids, newspapers, TV, and social media. If you didn't catch it, or you haven't heard, it got so bad for Megan that she had suicidal thoughts. And that struck a chord with me. I've never gotten to the point where I have ever contemplated suicide, but I have uttered the words to my husband through huge, ugly cry sobs, what's the point, when talking about the life we were living. And if you knew me in public, and even privately, you would never have known that words like that have come out of my mouth. At the time, we were living in Chicago and our daughter was four. I was the property manager of a gorgeous brand new building with 300 apartments. It was on the smaller side for the management company, although it seemed quite big to me. So we had a very lean staff. One of the perks was getting to live there rent-free as part of my compensation. So on the surface, I had it all. An amazing husband who's my best friend, a little girl who was gorgeous inside and out, We had a nice lifestyle, and we were still able to save money each month thanks to the perk of that apartment. Professionally, I was knocking it out of the park. We were living downtown in a beautiful place decked out with the latest furnishings from West Elm. My salary was decent, and the job was challenging. Honestly, what did I have to complain about? I was living the dream, or so it seemed. And then it all changed with work. Because we were such a lean staff, we were all stressed out, and honestly, we probably weren't paid enough, and we probably needed more people on board. There were staff turnovers, and my original team was eventually gone. They were amazing, and I don't blame them for looking for better opportunities. But to me, I felt alone, on an island, and the only one left to fix the problems. I broke down. Everything became hard, and it was for a little bit. Thankfully, though, I was able to turn things around thanks to my husband. I understand why Megan felt like the only person she could tell at the time was Harry. She's a grown woman, and while I could have reached out to my family, as she might have been able to, 
they were not in the same town and they weren't really part of my everyday life and struggles. Listening to that interview between Megan and Oprah was a reminder that none of us ever knows what's really going on in someone's life. They could seem like they have it all together and they are living an envious life, but they could feel trapped. And really, none of us will ever know what went on there, on either side, because there's always at least two sides to every story. And I figured out that all parties generally believe that their recollection of the events is how it went. We all see things through our own personal lens. And so I don't even think it's productive or worth it for us to choose sides. As an American, though, I cannot imagine how difficult it must have been to go from complete freedom to being handled by the firm or the institution, as it was referred to on the interview. As we think about this and with other people in our lives, I want to encourage all of us to show compassion and empathy. I mean, we need more of that these days. It takes courage for someone to speak out about their struggles, and I'm happy Megan did. I'm sure there are countless people who will benefit from knowing they're not alone. If someone who's practically a princess can get to that breaking point, well, so can we. So since this podcast is more about helping you let go of stuff that's holding you back so that you can live life to the fullest and not a current events celebrity gossip kind of show, I want to share five tips that can help you get to the other side when you're feeling trapped or like you're just going through the motions and can hardly see the point of it all. Number one is to get back to basics. When life is hard and overwhelming, you need to get back to the basics. This is the time when you really do just need to get out of bed, take a shower, get dressed, eat healthy food, get outside, and connect with a friend or loved one. I found it helpful to take walks outside and listen to upbeat music, but as long as those necessities are taken care of, the rest can wait. If it's important, it will be there when you're ready, and if it's not important, it usually finds a way to work itself out. Number two is to take tiny, consistent steps to improve your situation. You know the best way to eat an elephant, right? Yep, it's one bite at a time, which means that little steps when taken consistently will move you in the right direction to make a noticeable change. I've made big sweeping changes too, but sometimes that just makes you feel like you're running away and it doesn't actually solve the problem. But these small steps were one of the biggest things that helped me when I felt stuck. I created a vision and a goal for my work life and my home life. I showed up every day at my job and kept it at arm's distance so it wouldn't feel so personal. I focused on what would move the needle the most and I made sure to turn it off at night as best as I could seeing as I actually lived at my job. And I'm not going to lie, it was hard. Anytime I heard a fire truck in the middle of the night, I would jolt awake and listen intently to see if it was going to stop. Some nights it did, and those were tough nights, but most nights it didn't. My sleep did suffer, though, because there was no shortage of fire trucks in the middle of downtown Chicago. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) Well, you're Amy more of a, we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts. Eventually, I hit my goal of getting the building leased up, and that's when 90 to 95% of the units are rented, and I put in my notice. Being able to walk away was great, but accomplishing my goal felt incredible. During this time at home, I started decluttering again. Since one of my goals was to quit my job, I would also be quitting my apartment, and we would have to move. So I pared down again, got organized, and put systems in place to help me feel centered in my personal life. Things like meal planning and daily rhythms and routines really helped. Tip number three is to stop thinking in absolutes. When we're stressed and feel trapped, it can feel like there are only two options available, and one of those options is complete and utter failure. 
That's generally not the case though. I found that meditating or even just taking long, calming breaths can really help when I feel this way. Try getting in the habit of brainstorming at least three possible solutions to problems so that you can see there are often several different ways to go and potential outcomes that you can choose from. Tip number four is to get your home in order. I think I talked about this a little bit um, when I was setting my goals, but I have always been a stress cleaner. If things are overwhelming, I start cleaning and my husband knows to stay away for a little bit until I calm down. The funny thing is that when my home is a mess, I find that I am more likely to be a mess. Stress cleaning puts me in the driver's seat again and I'm able to take back control of my environment, which can then calm me down enough to deal with everything else. If you've never tried it, I recommend it. When my home is neat, I'm able to think more clearly and relax. And there is actually scientific evidence that says taking actions like decluttering and cleaning can make us happier. So science says so. So give it a try. And number five is to live life on your terms. If you are feeling trapped, it can stem from trying to live up to someone else's expectations, or it can be from high expectations that you've set for yourself based on what other people have said you should have, do, or be. But you are the only one living your life. I, and I'm doing air quotes here, should have been happy with the life that I had in Chicago. But once I really looked at myself in the mirror, I realized I was living a life I no longer wanted. For me, and I'm including my husband here too, it's never been about money, status, or the things we own. For us, it's always been about freedom. Freedom over our schedules. Freedom to pursue passions. Freedom to be there for my family. And that was not my reality during that stressful time. I felt trapped because my reality was not in line with my purpose or authentic self, and I did not have the freedom that I so desperately desired. I had to be willing to let it all go to truly live. And that's what I want for you. If that's what you desire, of course, I want you to be free, free to pursue your own passions and do your own thing and live a fulfilling life. I hope you're not feeling trapped, but if you are, I hope that you're able to see that you are not alone and there are paths for you to live your authentic self. So for anyone that is struggling though with suicidal thoughts, please know that there is help please go ahead and reach out. Call the suicide hotline. The number, I'm going to put it here just so that anybody who's listening and needs this can get it. The number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, 1-800-273-8255 and talk with someone who can help. For what it's worth, I choose to believe Megan and Harry, and I wish them all the best in their new free lives as they welcome their new little baby girl into their family. And I choose empathy for anybody who's struggling right now, anybody who feels trapped, anybody who's overwhelmed. It's not our place to judge them. It's our place to give them empathy and support. So I support you and I hope all the best for you. If you'd liked today's conversation and you want to continue it, I invite you to come over and share in the Wannabe Minimalist community on Facebook. The group is totally free and we're having lots of fun getting to know other like-minded people. Introduce yourself, share your thoughts, and let us know if there is something that we can help you with. But please know that negativity is not tolerated. It's a safe space filled with encouragement, and we'd love to have you. I'm excited to hear from you and offer encouragement on your journey toward less stuff, more happiness, and a vibrant life that you and your family deserve. And don't forget, if you would like to learn more about my upcoming Vibrant Home Academy, you can get on the wait list. Doors open in just a couple days. And get the show notes for today's episode at littlegreenbow.com slash 53. Once again, you can get on the wait list and get the show notes for today's episode on my website at littlegreenbow.com forward slash the number 53. Vibrant Home Academy is a game-changing home and life management course designed to help you take control of four key areas of your home, decluttering, organizing, cleaning, and systems through taking small but impactful actions that build effectiveness over the course of four short weeks. That just about wraps it up for today's episode, but before I go, I just want to take a minute to thank you for listening to this show. I appreciate that you choose to spend some of your time with me, and I hope that the information I provide is helpful. If you have anything you would love for me to cover and discuss, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. 
Let me know what else I can do to serve you and the topics that you would find the most helpful. Feel free to tag me on your Instagram stories. I'm little.green.bow on the platform. Please don't forget the dots. And you can email me at deanna at littlegreenbow.com. If you enjoyed today's episode and have not done so already, please be sure to subscribe to be notified of new episodes wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. I'm back and I'm putting more episodes out. I know I did take a slight hiatus, so apologies there, but I am back and looking forward to a fabulous and just amazing 2021. And also make sure you leave a review so that more people can find us and discover the benefits of a minimalist lifestyle. Cheers. Looking forward to see you next week. Bye.